Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Doomsday Clock, issue 10, written by Jeff Johns and drawn by Gary Frank. Man, this comic gives me a headache sometimes. <laughs> um, so, we'll dive into this. I think this is has is the, the most important issue in this series thus far, and it was great, but like I said, I, I need some Tylenol and a beer after I'm done with this because... Damn, it is dense, it is lofty, and it's it, it's great. Um, so let, let's dive into this. Um, so it kind of starts out with um, Carver Coleman, one of his films, getting uh, filmed, and he's forgetting one of his lines here. Um, and this is part of why this gives me a headache. I was googling around on um, the character of Carver Coleman before I did this review, after I finished reading this, and apparently some of this stuff, like he was an old man, in one of the in like issue three and like it's all bendy and twisty and it's part of the problem with how this thing has been um published right like issue three was a year and a half ago i don't remember that and it's so dense that i just it's it's almost impenetrable especially with its shipping schedule i can't wait for issue 12 to hit probably but hopefully by the end of this year so i can sit down with all of them and just oh like okay like take an afternoon with, with a bottle of ibuprofen and just go, okay, and, and like a whiteboard and go, okay, what's going on with this stupid comic book? All right, so th basically this is all um, Carver Coleman stuff. He's filming his movie. He goes to a bar and his his mom is basically blackmailing him. Um, and then we get more of the film and then we get into the meat of things and that's Dr. Manhattan screwing around with time and things like that. So he basically says, worlds live, worlds die, nothing lasts forever. Or does it? He says, it's August 1959, the light is taking me to pieces. Then he says, it's November 1st, 1985, I believe that's um, Silk Spectre on the moon from the original Watchmen comic. Um, then he's on... Mars in our world, when I say our, I mean the Prime at DC University says an army of superhumans surrounds me, Superman's friends, that was last issue, then he goes back to speaking with Ozymandias in the original watch, but he says, um, I understand uh, without condoning or condemning human affairs cannot be my concern, I'm leaving this galaxy for one less complicated, or so you think, um, he says, November 2nd, 1985, I enter the multiverse, key things there he says it's april 18th 1938 i'm drawn to superman's world for reasons i do not understand at the moment the first person i speak to will be a man named carver coleman so basically um coleman is you know out on his luck he's on on the streets he's homeless um and that's when dr manhattan arrives um right with some cops basically like super terminator style um, then he befriends um, Coleman, and this is when like, it's so bendy, and it's just a big old mind f, right? He says, um, uh, "I'm confused for the first time since Adrian blinded me with tachyons. I uh, try to pull back the curtain and understand the, the time delineation between worlds. I see myself on Mars, or is that now?" And he's confused, and he. We have some of him, you know, fighting with the Justice League, and he incapacitates them all. And then we've got, where am I? Over here, more of this movie stuff that's going on. And he's come across Carver Coleman, who was sitting there on um, the street, sleeping, and he's, you know, and introduces himself as John. They go into a a diner, and um, he's disguised himself, and he has this conversation, and he's trying to look into Carver's future, but he says, um, I feel like I'm walking through a fog. I try a simple exercise, just try to look three minutes into the future, but he's unable to. Um, and he needs something to focus on, so he focuses on Carver, and he says, it's like trying to see through a soap-covered window. And so he looks one year into the future, and so Carver has gone from being a homeless man to being cast in the part of... Um, Oh, whatever the, the, the noir detective movies that he's in is. Um, great stuff. Um, actually, it's 
but this one it might be a different one regardless he sees a year into the future and then he keeps seeing more and more years into the future and kind of tracking carver's um uh progression there right um then he disappears he goes outside and he sees um the first basically recreating the first appearance of superman right that classic action comics number one cover where he smashes the car and like the people here saying um like oh a man did this he was wearing a wrestling cape uh or a wrestling outfit and a cape he lifted the car like it was a crate of apples um then he leapt over the building like uh, you know leaping tall buildings in a single bound then he says the car the crowd the car superman they were never here it's april 18th 1938 and the world has changed and so he starts like tracking superman he says um uh, there are many inter. There, um, he says, a theoretical physicist named Bryce Dewitt hypothesized that the universe was constantly splitting into alternate timelines. The many worlds interpretation. It theorized that parallel worlds were endlessly created, flowing out like branches of a tree. The heroes of this Earth, DC universe, calls it multiverse, and this world was its center. So, like, this is prime, and everything else splits off from us. The world was introduced to Superman, in 1938. And then he goes through some of the, like, the other Justice Society, the other Silver Age superheroes, like Alan Scott here. Then we've got Jay Garrick, we've got Hawkman, we've got Adam, Dr. Fate, Spectre, Our Man, I believe, is Rex Tyler. Then we get the Justice Society, kind of some classic heroes. Um, And then um, monkeying around with time, Superman, or they... Manhattan starts to see things, right? So this panel right here, specifically, like the whole time that Justice Society is talking about, are we waiting for Superman or not? Do we think he's going to join the Justice Society? So these two panels right here are basically mirror images of each other. And so he says, um, you know, one of them says, no more pictures yet. I think it's Our Man says it. Um, no pictures yet, Johnny. I'm still working on my costume. The hood's not right. Then the Flash says, "Hey, let's give let's give Superman some more time." Then um, the photographer says, "Hey, I can find out where Superman is." Um, then he calls out whatever this guy is. I don't know what that is. Then the next road down, it says the exact same thing, but no one says anything about Superman. Uh, Alan Scott even says the entire team is here. And then the Doctor Manhattan's. Uh, exposition says it's november 1940 green lantern has never heard of superman no one has where is he so he starts to peel back what's going on we get some more stuff with carver here um he says um like carver's never heard of superman even though it's 1948 um so he goes to Kansas and he sees different variations of Superman and his origin. Not variation. It's yeah, black. It's different variations of his origin. Like you can let me turn the page back here. It's so mind bending and confusing. Um, like where there's different. Um, uh, like there's this version of ship and this version of the ship and this version of the ship and like it's all in different time periods, right? 1956, 1986, right? Um, and it's always changing um, again and again. And, um, like, uh, Manhattan's watching all of this, and he's like, I don't understand this universe, which is crazy because Dr. Manhattan's supposed to understand everything. Um, and then he's, you know, like, thinking about, like, you know, Superman's parents died, but then they're alive again, and they die again. And he's saying, you know... Um, uh, I began to believe I've misinterpreted what this universe actually is. I look to the future following Superman's trail of influence. How much, uh, how can one man affect so much even 1,000 years from the future? Then we get um, some good old uh, Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes with Cosmic Boy, Lightning Boy. I thought it was Lightning Lad. I could be wrong. Um, Saturn Girl. And then this is when he starts to monkey with the DC universe, right? So we see him go back in time and move Alan Scott's Green Lantern away from him so he never becomes Green Lantern. So he says here, um, uh, why is he, Superman, the center of the universe? Forces such as the Anti-Monitor and Extant have always been responsible 
um, have been responsible for Superman's shifts in uh, shifts in Superman's timeline. Dark Direction seem to constantly target the hope he embodies in an effort to redefine him. That's interesting. I grow curious. As others have done, I move to reshape the universe so that I might see how it forms around Superman. I change the past to challenge the future. I wa- and I'm going to read a bunch of this because it's so interesting. As I watch reality come crashing down, I realize that this universe is not part of a multiverse as others believe. The multiverse reacts to this universe. There have been endless parallel worlds. None. 52 dark multiverses, um, all created by changes to this universe. This universe stands apart from the multiverse. It is a metaverse, and it is a constant state of change. Oh my god, it's a metaverse. So like, this universe, the D- the prime DC universe, right, the one that we read our comics in, is, you know, it says it's always in a constant state of change. So like, he is like meta realizing it almost like from a reader's perspective that everything changes you know we have these different eras in comics right this the golden age silver age bronze age the modern age postmodern age or whatever that whatever we're in right now he's tracking these changes to super like reor uh, like regracking his origins crisis on infinite earths right you know all these multiverses down to none. The dark multiverse, like Dark Knight's Metal from a year and a half ago, or whenever that was. Um, he's realizing all of this and tracking it and trying to figure out, you know, it's like, we're the central thing. And any changes that happen here, like in the comics, affect all of these. It's so mind-bendy. Oh, my God. It's such a cool idea, but I, I need some ibuprofen. Um, he says, and I, and I remove the linchpin to the Justice Society of America, and I change... Superman once again and there's just these different ones and then we get New 52 Superman um, and then we get um, Wally West right here which we saw in DC Universe uh, Rebirth special number one like the one shot issue that kind of kicked off the DC Rebirth two years ago whenever that was and he says um, um, one it says uh, one year ago the metaverse became aware of my hubris that's dr manhattan tacking talking and wally says i know what you did whatever you did they'll stop you and oh it's so good and then dr manhattan says i realize that the universe the metaverse is not passive like an organism fighting to survive there are aspects of it that i have underestimated an innate hope that fights back to the surface so cool i love this idea and then we get um carver coleman getting murdered here um then oh it's so good and he's talking about more changes um he says um manhattan says i'm a being of in action on a collision course with a man of action meaning superman um to this universe of hope i have become the villain so so good and i think that's um superman superman waking up here and his eyes look pissed i believe he's still hurt from the from firestorm exploding a while ago and then he says here um I turn back a couple page um i he says i've recreated the metaverse and it has turned against me i see a vision of superman in the future he has found me and he destroys me or I destroy the metaverse. So cool. So this basically confirms that Dr. Manhattan is the one that caught the, the in-universe reason-ish, um, I guess, that caused the New 52 reboot of the DC Universe, removing those 10 years of time, um, and then also caused DC Rebirth with him monkeying around with the history and continuity of the DC Universe. Um, or the DC Metaverse. Oh my god, it's so good. I love this. We could talk about it forever. Um, I need to go back and read the first nine issues of this again because everything is starting to come into focus here and I really wish this had a much better publishing schedule. Um, I was talking with the owner of my LCS um, when I went to pick it up this week and apparently this is supposed to take place in like the future of where we are uh, canonically within the DC Universe. So at some point when this is done, his 
his his working theory is, without any insider knowledge that I know of, is that at the end of this year, December 2020, when or December night, uh, December 2019, before we go into 2020, Doomsday Clock will be done. Um, it will have some massive sort of, some sort of effect on DC continuity. Something will change it. I don't think it'll be as grand a scope as New 52 or DC Rebirth, but um, he says that he thinks that the um, all the comics that are going on will will have a time jump. So like everything is over here, then we've got DC Re or uh, Doomsday Clock. Everything will catch up to it, and we the reader will meet it right there after the events of Doomsday Clock. And there'll be some sort of um, time gap that we may or may not get filled in on. We'll have to deal with whatever those changes are. And some of his evidence to back that up is. Um, the changes in some of the DC's uh, shipping schedule. They kind of want to have their new track for, for 2020 going forward, things like that. Boom. I, I love this stuff. Guys, what do you think about this? Uh, did you need a drink or did you need some ibuprofen or some Tylenol when you were done with this? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below because this is a, a comic series that we could unpack for hours or years, whatever. Um, it'll be talked about for years for better and for worse. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here at the channel. Hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.